Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Professor uh, Hassan Maghrabi. It gives me a great pleasure to be here, and thank you for your invitation with these honorable uh, speakers. And uh, my article is going to tackle one of the most important points which we are confronted with in endometriosis, and that's pain. When it comes to endometriosis, always we do have the problem of, there are two major problems in endometriosis, and these are actually pain and infertility. And always it has been mentioned that about 87% of those who are having chronic pelvic pain, this can be attributed to endometriosis. The modern advances in treatment of the pain in endometriosis aimed at tackling the debilitating pain to decrease the degree of pain which is annoying the woman. And in this respect, actually, long-term treatment is usually required. And unfortunately, when it comes to recurrence, six to 12 months after the stoppage of the treatment, the problem is that there is recurrence. But what about the pathophysiology of the endometriosis-related pain? Actually, the first of all, it has, it's concerned with certain changes in the brain signaling pathways, and there are inflammatory and hormonal alterations. As well, the secretion of cytokines and prostaglandins, they usually make an activation for the nerve fibers to release inflammatory molecules. We should bear in mind that the pelvis is usually highly vascularized and endometriosis, the presence of endometriosis is going by itself to promote neurogenesis. So it's not surprising to see that the pain might be debilitating in endometriosis. As we see in this figure, uh, this is briefing of what I said in the previous slide, and it speaks about alterations in the brain, inflammation in the procedure, and the release of proangiogenic factors like the VEGF and in addition to other items like the cytokines and the prostaglandins. As we see here, the pain may be incapacitating for many women and uh, it needs actually interference or intervention. What about the modalities for the treatment of the pain associated with this endometriosis? We do have the medical and the surgical. And we have the pain medications, which can be combined with the medical in one category. When it comes to medical treatment, we are going to find that we have hormonal therapy and non-hormonal therapy, whereas surgical interference can be uh, carried out via laparoscopy or laparotomy. When we return to earlier, to 2010, for the, uh, society, the Canadian Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, their algorithm for the management of the pain associated with endometriosis included treatment just on the suspicion of endometriosis by co uh, combined oral contraceptive pills, whether to be taken continuous or cyclic. Another option of treatment as a second option, they advocated the usage of progestines to be taken orally or as injectables or to be applied as an intrauterine system named Mirena. GNRH agonist has been always there, but we are going to see the drawbacks of this treatment, although this treatment is effective. Interchangeably for the medical therapy, we have also the surgical therapy if this fails, and this can be managed via, as we said, laparoscopy or laparotomy. But if there is no answer for the medical or the surgical therapy, we should reconsider the diagnosis and to manage the chronic pain, uh, which is by multidisciplinary support. Let us speak about the medical treatment first, and we can see that always the goal has been to reduce the pain and inflammation in addition to reduction of the ovarian and local hormones. As we said, we have hormonal and non-hormonal treatments. For the hormonal ones, we usually have the traditional ones which have been used for long, like the combined oral contraceptive pills, the progestines, the danazol, and the GNRH agonists. But during the last two decades, there has been various studies about emerging, promising alternatives that can be used, including the GNRH antagonists, the progesterone antagonists, selective estrogen or receptor modulators, aromatase inhibitors. What about the other treatments? The other treatments had always the idea 
of tackling what increases in endometriosis, whether it be drugs that act as anti-inflammatory or anti-angiogenic, or that decrease the production of cytokines or decreasing the matrix metalloproteinases, which we are going to see now the uh, role of each of these briefly. Of course, because I know I have limited time. Let us start with the medical therapy. At first, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories didn't prove efficacy when it came to naproxene, but many studies said that the use of COX-2 inhibitors has been shown to decrease the VEGH, uh, VG, uh, VEGF levels and significantly to improve the pain and the dysmenorrhea. The combined oral contraceptive pills have always been popular. It has been widely used off-label as initial treatment with good results in decreasing the pain and primary dysmenorrhea. But the problem is that not all types of pain they do respond equally to the combined oral pills in addition to the side effects that may emerge with their usage. What about the danazole? A popular drug effective in doses 200 to 800 milligrams per day, but this, with the emergence of new treatments, the use of danazole has decreased owing to the androgenic side effects in amongst other side effects with its use. What about the progestins? The progestins, as we said, they come next to the combined pills or they can be used as first-line treatment in oral injectable form or an IU uh, intratrine system form. The newer progestins, which has been used, uh, were targeted to selectively bind to the progesterone receptors, and there came the dienogest, which have been mentioned earlier. This drug has been investigated systematically initially for 52 weeks, but the uh, studies has been extended to 65 weeks with very promising results and was performed in Europe and Japan and other areas in the world. It has been shown that the dienogest can inhibit direct growth inhibitory action. It can decrease the cytokine levels. In addition to when compared to the GNRH agonists, they said that dienogest is no lesser than the GNRH agonists according to Tamora et al. 2019. It has stronger cytoreductive effects, but we can say that they are comparable, both of them. This is marketed here in Egypt and in the whole world by Bayer Company as Vizan, which have been mentioned earlier. And for those women who can't tolerate the oral treatment or the injectables, there is the intratrine system. It can decrease both the pain and the recurrence. Is there a recurrence? Yes, we have said that six to 12 months after stoppage of treatment, we can encounter recurrences. Here, is, uh, here are the results of some studies of the dienogest, and it shows actually that the decrease of the pain was much better than with a placebo. And uh, when it, uh, it was compared to the leoprolid acetate, the results were comparable in the degree of decreasing pain. And with its usage for a long time, sustained pain relief was attained over 52 weeks during these studies. As we said, the GNRH agonists has long been used, have, lo they have long been used, and actually there has been the problem of the bone mineral density loss, which limited their use, and so add back therapy was advocated if we were going to use them. But the problem is that still some of the women who are having endometriosis, the endometrial tissues can express aromatase and produce its own estrogen, and so the response to the drug was variable. Then came, in 2018, the approval of the FDA for a newer drug, which is a GNRH antagonist named Elagolix, and the trade name is Orelisa. This drug it causes dose-dependent suppression of the pituitary and the ovarian hormones. It significantly suppresses the dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia early from the first few weeks of treatment with acceptable efficacy and safety, and the side effects owing to the deficiency of the progestin can be treated by add back therapy using norethindrone and earlier progestin, according to Noadaik uh, 2020. Progesterone antagonists, myfpristone and onapristone, these are, are sometimes put under the category of the progesterone selective receptor modulators, and in others, 
they are mentioned as progesterone antagonists alone. They both have anti-proliferative effects, but unfortunately, we are having the anti-glucocorticoid properties of these drugs to limit their use. Some studies like that of Zhang in 2017 found that the combined usage of laparoscopic treatment, laparoscopy treatment in addition to mypriston gave significant results with less recurrence and no drug accumulation side effects. Let us shift to the selective progesterone receptor modulators and the very popular one is the aliprestal acetate, 15 milligrams to be used every other day for three months. This has been experimented with very promising results, and it was found to reduce the refractory chronic pelvic pain that's associated with endometrium and, and uh, with endometriosis. And the endometrial changes that occurred with this drug were reversible with its discontinuation. And it's here marketed in Egypt as the name Norpregna for Pharmacia Company. What about the selective estrogen receptor modulators? When it comes to estrogen, we are going to say that it exacerbates endometriosis. But if we are going to speak about the selective estrogen receptor modulators, they do have some antagonistic and some agonistic effects. First generations were the tamoxifen and the second was the raloxifen, but the third generation named bazidoxifen was found to have the greatest antagonistic and least agonistic effects compared to other serms and it was shown to decrease the endometriotic results. And in some studies, it was found to decrease the pain and the estrogen receptor expression in endometrium of treated animals. As we know that endometriosis is associated with aromatase, uh, with estrogen production, and estrogen production is associated with aromatase. Aromatase inhibitors were thus, have thus been used either alone or in combination, giving good results for the treatment of endometriosis and endometriosis-associated pain. The usage over five years has been safe, and the, but there were some concerns about the mineral bone density loss. As for melatonin, we all know that melatonin is a very potent anti-inflammatory drug. It's a free radical scavenger. It's an antioxidant and plays a role in immune regulation. And so, they experimented the usage of melatonin and it was found to exhibit both pain relieving and anti-inflammatory effects. Researchers from Brazil said that melatonin, if given as 10 milligrams at bedtime, can reduce the pain symptoms associated with endometriosis. Here are some other modalities, but I can't mention the studies concerning them because the studies had com some conflicting results. Some said that they would decrease the endometriosis, but not the pain. Others said, no, they decrease the pain and the endometriotic lesion size. And this one, but in many of the studies, the results actually were very promising. And they all play on the assumption of acting, whether as an anti-inflammatory or to decrease the size of the endometrioma cells or to decrease, uh, to inhibit the matrix metalloproteinases or to inhibit angiogenesis, because we know that angiogenesis is very important in endometriosis. These are named like immunomodulatory drugs. We have pentoxifelin, interferon alpha, the statins, vitamin D3, angiogenesis inhibitors, matrix metalloproteinase inhibitors, and tumor alpha inhibitors. But this last one here actually, more studies said that it doesn't decrease the deep pain associated with endometriosis. Some others, they said, no, it acts actually upon the light endometriosis or the lesser degrees. A new thing has been seen here when the studies uh, uh, have, been, uh, have been carried uh, at Yale University, and they found that a certain gene named micro RNA let 7 b a genetic precursor that controls gene expression, was repressed in endometriosis. And so they thought about injecting it in mice, and they found that with this injection, there has been great reductions in endometrial lesions. So actually, if gene therapy is going to prove effective in humans as well, it's going to be very advantageous treatment as it's non-surgical, non-invasive, and non-hormonal way to treat endometriosis. We can't forget that there are some home remedies for the pain endometriosis uh, 
associated pain for treatment, like the usage of the heat, pelvic massage, over-the-counter pain relievers, omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, light exercise, acupuncture, rest and stress relief, castor oil, ginger tea, dietary changes, and the use of transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. Certain foods has to be avoided, like the dairy products, the gluten, the processed foods, sugars, caffeine, and alcohol. And the first two, of course, are related to increased estrogen. And foods which are advocated to be given are the green leafy vegetables, the broccoli, salmon, and ginger. Let's go to the last modality, which is the surgical therapy. And we said that surgical interference can be via laparoscopy or laparotomy to make an excision or vaporization, ablation, or in the form of presacral neurectomy or luna. With surgery, 80% relief of the pain has been achieved. But what's the golden standard for the surgical treatment? What do we use? Is it laparotomy or laparoscopy? And if we use laparoscopy, what to do with the laparoscope? The best, according to the uh, Endometriosis Foundation of America, found that laparoscopic excision surgery was the best, and it was superior to coagulation to relieve the pain. Luna wasn't found effective for relieving of the pain, that's uh, the laparoscopic uterine uh, nerve ablation, but presacral neurectomy was found to be 87% effective. Finally, if hysterectomy is going to be an option, it's not, refer it's not preferred, but if used, it should be performed better totally because the uh, supracervical one, we know all that the cervix is full of nerve endings, and so the treatment is going, not going to be efficacious as desired. So finally, we go here, we should know something, that the pain severity doesn't correlate directly with the endometrial tissue form. Sometimes we find the endometrial tissue is too much and the pain is less, and vice versa is true. Medical treatment can provide temporary relief. How much? To what extent? As we find, we are going to see that the recurrence of the pain after surgery was found to be about 44%, whereas after medical treatment, it was found to be 53%. And there came here the combination of the medical and surgical treatment whenever needed in certain women. Medical treatment with surgical intervention was going, uh, can lead to long-term sustained pain relief with excellent results. So in conclusion, we know that endometriosis affects about 10% of the women in the reproductive age. The two main problems are infertility and pain, as we said before. Treatment involves medical and surgical modalities. The medical modalities may be hormonal or non-hormonal. Many new modalities are emerging with promising results and they are acting on the pathophysiology of the endometriosis. Surgical treatment is effective as a modality for the treatment of pain. And when combined with medical treatment, it can lead to long-term sustained pain relief. Thank you very much for your attendance and I'm ready for any questions now. Thank you very much, Professor Kortan, for an excellent presentation. I'm sorry that we keep you that late for such a very difficult presentation. And you are an excellent speaker, as I've heard before. Thank you very excellent. Much. Thank very you. nice speaker. Full of energy also to keep us Thank awake. You. Uh, uh, what are the indications of uh, laparoscopy in patients who have pain with endometriosis? When when you give up? When it, is, when it becomes very expensive medical treatment or when? Actually, we do, I advocate personally that the usage of the medical treatment is to be targeted first because many of the conditions, even if we are having endometrioma or something like this, and we have spoken about endometrioma and when to interfere. So I do resort to the medical treatment, but whenever the medical treatment is not enough, laparoscopic surgery is going to be much better. And here is what about the modality of the laparoscopy, how to use the laparoscope in such instance. Because you know that uh, if we are going to use the laparoscope aggressively, this is going to decrease the ovarian reserve and affect the future fertility of the woman. And so here laparoscopy, I see that laparoscopy is to come second to medical treatment if needed for another indication or if the patient is, the pain is debilitating and not tackled well with the medical interference. Professor uh, Lassie, Bruce, would you 
share your experience with Professor Kortam about Elagolix. You're talking about Elagolix? Yes. Yeah, we were part of the trials for that. It clearly works well. And um, Relagolix is now close to being approved and has similar efficacy. So I think, uh, is that what you were asking? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm asking your experience with it because I know that you are participating in this study. Yeah, it, from a pain standpoint, it appears to be very good. We were, um, we thought we could tell which patients were on the uh, placebo and which ones were on the active drug just during the study. Oh, yeah. But we're also doing a prospective randomized controlled trial for infertility uh, called the EFFECT trial using oligolix. And that is going to start next month as soon as we get drug from uh, the company, AbV. So that'll be exciting. Okay. Uh, Professor Kortam, uh, recurrence does not speak well for uh, surgery because you've said that the, the instance of recurrence with medical treatment is 40%, with surgery it's 50% or, or the reverse, I think. So yes, it is with the medical treatment, recurrence is 53% and with the and surgery, 40. 4%. So it doesn't speak for surgery. No, it's a, here the recurrence is more with the uh, medical treatment than the surgery. Yeah, but 10%. Yes, it's ten, just 10%. And the, here comes the importance sometimes of the combination. Whenever one is not working well, the combination of both can be advocated in some. And I've mentioned an example about the use of aromatase inhibitors with the, uh, uh, sorry, about the uh, mifepristone with the minimal laparoscopic uh, intervention, laparoscopically for uh, surgical interference. Uh, Professor Vanuccini, she's still there? Yeah, 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 I'm still there. I'm still okay. there. Uh, if a patient is resistant to medical treatment, mm -hmm. what is the workup you suggest in terms of what you've all said, of all of us? What, what is the imaging workup that you suggest? The imaging, the you mean? Yes, uh -huh. imaging. Yeah. What is, if a well, patient is usually, to usually uh, the, 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 the imaging it's done before. So, uh, of course, it's depending from where the, the patient is referred. So, if it's our patient, usually we do a pre treatment, or if it's already on treatment, of course, we redo a staging, like we, we can ask a pre-treatment assessment. And so we look for all the small, uh, le even small lesion. So I was very impressed by uh, the statement uh, that was, uh, was done before saying that it doesn't matter the size, you can even have a very, very small lesion and the patient can have a really high, really high pain scores. So looking for where the lesion is and then we can decide which treatment is better. Of course, uh, if every, every single treat, medical treatment has failed, uh, surgery is the option, I would say. So I, I, anyway, I think that the, uh, again, the goal is to try to uh, individualizing the patient. So we should ask the patient first if she's got a desire of pregnancy, her age, which is very important, her needs, her desire. And according to that, we can decide, we can manage and decide together a plan. So it's not done by, only by me. It's like a medical uh, patient uh, relationship. So we have to decide together according to what the lady wants to do. Because if she do not have any desire of pregnancy, of course, I would, I would go for something different. And in case she, she needs, uh, she wants to have a baby, uh, I would decide differently. So um, overall, I would suggest to try to delay as much as possible the surgical treatment. Try to do just one surgical treatment because unfortunately what we have seen in all the studies we have done is that, that once the patient has been operated, she would be reoperated twice, three times, four times. We had patient operated 18 times 
I was so impressed by that patient because everywhere she went, she found someone to operate her. And <laughs> the, the, the final uh, picture was um, 35 years without uterus. So the very end was the hysterectomy and she was still in pain. So, I mean, uh, this is not what we want to, so we, we won't be, we won't, quality of life we want baby i mean women's health not just do a great operation or give the best treatment our goal is the woman she's okay she she's got a, a good um, quality of life and she's happy because um, if you uh, have a chat with these patients their life have been usually has been destroyed by endometriosis in terms of social life, personal uh, work, uh, their job, um, their relationship with partners. So our goal is not to perform um, wonderful surgical or medical treatment, but to be effective in what we are doing. Thank you for a very comprehensive answer. I think most of us share the idea that Endometriosis is a very complex disorder, heterogeneous disorder, and, and non-surgical management should be uh, the first line of management. And if it fails, possibly we can go to surgery. Professor Bruce Lassie, do you share the same opinion? Yes, I think that's right. I think the... Uh, surgery should come last. I think surgery, uh, De Cherny said surgery is dead. The only thing... That, <laughs> yes. Uh, and in the presentation, it came last, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Gabriel, do you have the same opinion? I, I agree with you, sir. It's a heterogeneous group with many presentations, many stages. Yes, yes, I agree. And surgery should, should come last. Professor yes. Mahdi? Surgery is the last resort for a pain with endometriosis, first medical and then medical. And uh, after exhaustion of all medical uh, possibilities, then I refer to surgery. Uh, most of the cases that uh, improve by surgery, uh, those with dense adhesions or uh, retroverted flexed RVF uterus with dense adhesions with colon or uh, with uh, nodules or deep uh, pelvic endometriosis or uh, casing ovaries, uh, these cases improve by uh, surgery, by adhesiolysis and ablation of endometriosis or excision of endometriosis. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.